It was the night before Christmas. I was closing down for business in my little prison shop. Hey friends, welcome back to Whiskey and Wit. I'm Whitney and today's video is going to be full of a ton of a Dollar Tree DIY Christmas inspiration, so stay tuned. So you guys know I'm a huge Buffalo Check fan for Christmas, but this year I wanted to incorporate a little bit more rustic wood tones. So I'm gonna do four different DIYs today in that kind of rustic, neutral feel, all with Dollar Tree supplies. This video is a collab with Leah Nip over at DIY Beauty On Purpose. If you haven't checked out her channel, I will leave her information down below. We have very similar styles. She's got a lot of adorable DIYs. She's already cranked out a ton of Christmas content for this year. She's well ahead of me, so head over there and check out her channel after you're done with this video. The overall theme of this collab is Pinterest inspired DIYs. So once you get done here, be sure to go see all of the goodies that Leah Nip created for you guys. This first project is hands down my favorite of the whole video. This was inspired by a tutorial that I found on Toolbox Divas. I will link it all down below. It was something that I've had pinned for a long time and I wanted to do it. And I thought this Pinterest inspired video with Dollar Tree items was the perfect time to end up doing it. So inside of these are actually pool noodles, which I couldn't believe when I saw it on Pinterest. And so I was like, I have to try this to see if it is as easy as they said it was. So the first step is to go through and measure your pool noodles and figure out how long you want them. Mine, I ended up doing two pieces at 15 inches and then one ended up being like just shy of 16 inches. I wanted them a little bit different so it looked like naturally cut wood. Then I went through and wrapped them in craft paper so I knew I had a piece that would wrap all the way around each noodle. This is just Dollar Tree craft paper. The last step to prepping your paper is to trace the end of your noodle because you're going to want to cover that too so it looks like the cut piece of wood. I just went through and traced circles on a scrap piece of craft paper and cut them out. Then it's time to start making your logs. So step one is to cut up that strip into little pieces and then crinkle them. That's gonna give you that weathered, kind of peely birch wood look. And then I took both of my circles for this particular piece and Mod Podge them on to each end to start the process. If I had to do this again, I would hot glue the ends down because the Mod Podge, I'd like fought with it way too much. And I ended up hot gluing it towards the end anyway. So I would just do that in the first place and not mess with it. Then to cover your pool noodle, you're gonna take those strips that you crinkled up, unravel them, and then Mod Podge them around the noodle. I probably made my strips a little too small. You could probably go maybe like two inches. Mine were about an inch in width, but they ended up working out just fine. So as you're applying, you're gonna to wanna to put Mod Podge on the noodle as well as the paper that you're overlapping. So everything kind of melds together. And then after I stuck the pieces down, I went back through and added just another coat over the top of the end of the strip so it all laid down. So really, if anything pops up, just slap some Mod Podge on it and it'll be great. And so after the first step, this is what your log should look like. Not totally there yet, but we'll get there. Next step is to add the knots. So I thought this was crazy and it looked terrible when I put it on, but trust me, just stick with me, it will work. So I took some Mod Podge, crinkled up some pieces of toilet paper. I just used like one square each and I ended up Mod Podging them to random spots throughout the log. Now I feel like this is slightly like crazy because it's 2020 and all the toilet paper situations, but you know, we're gonna roll with it. I digress. <laughs> So once your toilet paper is all stuck there and dried, then it's time to paint. So I took some white Waverly chalk paint and painted all over the pieces. You're going to want to make sure you get the ends as well. And for this step, you don't have to worry about painting over the toilet paper. Just paint around it. As you can see here, it's a cross between a dry brush and a full paint. You want some of that craft paper to pop out and that's what's going to make your bark look cool. Once that's dried, then you're gonna go through with a couple different variations of like a white wash, but you're gonna make a gray wash. So just a little bit of water, added some paint. I didn't measure anything. I just kind of got it to the color that I wanted. 
and then I painted it all over my noodle and this one helps your paper crinkle a little bit more and also it kind of softens that white so you don't want a ton of color here but you don't want your branch to be stark white you want it to look a little weathered so that's what this step does then once that dries, you're going to repeat the same thing, but with a brown wash. So I just took some brown acrylic paint. I think it was nutmeg brown and I went through and covered my noodle. Now this is a little bit darker than the original wash with the gray, but you're also going to want to make sure that you don't have any pieces like pooling anywhere. You want to make sure it's similar to a dry brush. If for some reason you have an area where some of your paint has pooled like this, just take your brush and really spread it out and that's what's going to give it more of a natural look. Then the last step is to make those knots look not so toilet papery. So you're gonna add a little bit of black paint to your gray wash. And then I went through and just soaked the pieces of toilet paper in the gray wash. A, it will mat them down, and B, it will then also really make it look like that knot. And then take a little bit more and add just some random lines to really weather up that look. And that is your last step for painting. Here is what they look like when it's all done. I was so skeptical throughout the process, but you guys, these are so awesome. I'm so excited to decorate with them one. I also love that they're not super heavy. Like they are pool noodles, obviously, so they're not super heavy. I just tied them up with some jute twine and I'm so excited to decorate with them this year. In that same rustic vein, this kind of gives me Scandinavian Christmas vibes, is this wood tree. So everybody's been raving about these triangles and I finally stumbled upon them and so I knew what I wanted to make with them. So I busted them apart, grabbed my favorite wood stain, and stained the outside. I made sure to stain every single edge because I wanted this to be able to sit like in the middle of a table if I wanted to, where the front and the back and everything is stained. Once you stain these pieces, they look really pretty with the wood, and so definitely think about that for your next project. And then once everything was dry, I brought it in and got ready to cut it. Now, if you have a chop saw or a miter saw, I would definitely just go outside and cut it with a saw, but it has been so gross in Illinois lately. I didn't have the time or the patience, so I kind of like did a wonky version of it on my miter box, but hey, it did the trick. I was resourceful, didn't have to break out the whole saw, and then once my pieces were cut, I went ahead and sanded them down so they were flat. I also wanted to make sure that my piece when it was freestanding was going to be decently stable, and so I cut out some little braces for the back out of just some popsicle sticks from Dollar Tree. Then I hot glued all of my pieces together, added my braces to the back, and then I realized it was missing something. I looked at it a few minutes and then I realized that that top area where it was just open from the singular one was just too bare for me. So I took a scrap piece, cut two 45 degree angles on my miter box, which I love that thing. It is so cheap, I will link it down below. And then that just made it look a little bit more like a full completed shelf and I was much happier with that look. The shelves are not too high, so I don't think I'll put anything on it, but this is the vibe I'm going for for my mantle this year, and I think this will be a great addition to it for $3. Speaking of my mantle, this is also a vibe that I am just loving with the greenery, the white, and this mercury glass with the candles, just the warm lights. I put this up to take the footage and I like don't want to take it down. <laughs> I'm definitely still in fall mode, but these might be staying up. So with this, I just took some Dollar Tree candles that I've had sitting around. They don't smell like really anything and I haven't burnt them in a while. So I decided I liked the containers, so I was gonna repurpose it. So I put them in a pot of boiling water and I learned this trick from Sarah Jane over at Cheek on the Cheap. She has made so many amazing candles with this trick from Dollar Tree stuff. And so I was like, I can use that to just get the plain containers because I liked the size where they were a little bit wider and shorter. So once those are cleaned out, I went outside with a bottle of vinegar and water, equal parts, and then also Rust-Oleum Mirror Effect spray paint. I went through, misted my container with the vinegar and water mix, and then I started spray painting it with the mirror effect. So the goal here is to get it drenched with the spray paint and then take a paper towel and just dab it. That is going to pop the water bubbles that were trapped underneath the paint 
it's going to give you that mercury glass effect. Now you're not going to get that exact like kind of, it looks almost like it's kind of peeling off. This is more like just kind of a funky like vintage mirror look, but I really like it, especially for the fact that these were repurposed from my house. <laughs> And I went through, added three different layers, let them dry in between, and these are so dreamy. You would not guess that they're from Dollar Tree. Mercury glass stuff is so stinking expensive. And so this cheap alternative, I'm pretty sure that spray paint's like eight bucks. And I've had that since 2016 when I started DIYing for my wedding. So it lasts. And finally, here is a holiday slash winter DIY. I love this cute little snowman. I've seen a lot of the rustic burlap snowmen all over Pinterest, and so I wanted to do a spin on it. And I'm always looking for stuff to hang in place of my wreaths when I take down my Christmas decor, so I thought this was perfect. I took one of the large 3D wreath forms that they have at Dollar Tree now. They used to just have one size, now they have two, so this is the larger. I took some jute twine and my handy dandy little finger protector and hot glued the end of some jute twine on to the circle. Now you could spray paint this outside if you wanted to, but I kind of wanted the contrast of the dark because all of my doors are white. So I wanted the circle to stand out, but you could paint it white or do whatever. And then I just started to make my web. So I pulled it across the circle, hot glued the jute twine down and then continued the wrapping process until it was a look that I liked. You could wrap it more or less than I did. It's really just to get the aesthetic that you're going for. I wanted enough that you could tell it was a snowman, but I wanted it to be just, just kind of full. I didn't want it to be completely covered where you couldn't see through. And I repeated that same step for the second circle. So then I wanted to create out of some Dollar Tree foam board, the eyes, nose, mouth, and buttons. So I went through, traced some stuff out. I used my new Arteza hobby knife. I have not used it on anything, but that thing cuts so well through the foam board. I will link it down below, but I am super amazed at the quality and honestly, it went really fast to cut through it. And so there's been a ton of times where I wanted to use foam board for stuff and I use scissors or like a box cutter and it looks terrible. So I would highly recommend that. And then once everything was cut out and I sanded down the edges, I went through and painted the nose with some Waverly chalk paint and orange, and then I did black for the other coal pieces. The last step is to assemble everything. So I tied together the two pieces with some jute twine at the center, and then I hot glued my eyes, nose, mouth, and buttons on to my little snowman. And then I finished off the look with a Dollar Tree Buffalo check scarf. I went with black and white so I could use it into the winter time, but I didn't end up gluing it down so I could change his scarf out from the red and black Buffalo check or any other plaid scarf that they have. So here's a look with the snowman off of my white door. So as you can see, I like the outline. It really shows that it's a snowman to really finish off the look. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know your favorite project down in the comments below. Again, thank you to Leona for collabing with me. Be sure to check out her channel. It is called DIY Beauty on Purpose. Again, all that information is all linked down below. Also, if you came over from her channel, welcome. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed it and will hit subscribe to hang out and craft with me in the future. So thanks again for watching and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye.